Okay, in this video we're going to look at the graphs of functions. Recall a function is a rule where basically for every x value there's one y value. And uh, we don't always use x and y of course. You could use t and r or anything so we don't always use the same letters. Anyway, um, so we're going to look at the graphs of functions today. Let's say we wanted to graph this equation right here. Uh, you might find it helpful to solve for y first and then you get y equals 4 minus x squared, so uh, and we'd probably pick x values, right? Make a table. Now, um, does this, uh, would this equation define a function? Is it true? Every time you pick an x value, do you only get one y value? The answer is yes. This would be a function. And if you look at the graph, the graph of this function looks like this. Okay? Uh, but let's, so when, when an equation represents a function, it's okay to use f of x instead of y. So this would be the graph of f of x is 4 minus x squared. So remember what this means? f of negative 1, that's the um, value of y when x is negative 1. So from the graph, what do you get there? Isn't it, looks like it's about 3. Of course, when you approximate values, you're not going to necessarily get the exact value, just reading it from a graph. How about another one? What is f of 0? Remember what that is? That's the value of x, or I should say the value of y, when x is 0. Uh, when x is 0, uh, y is 4. We, we also call that the y-intercept, right? The y-intercept is 4. Now, don't, don't get that confused with this. I almost did earlier. This says if f of x equals 0, find x. Now, remember what f of x is? That's y. So we're asking if the y-coordinate is 0, what is the x-value? And notice there's two x values. x could equal 2 or x could equal negative 2. All right, what's the domain and range of this function? Domain would be negative infinity to infinity. And range is everything below 4 or equal to 4, right? Okay, let's do another one. So, so this first graph would be a function. Now, if we were to graph this one, uh, let's see, it's already solved for x. It might be easier to pick y values when you make your table. Pick, pick some y values. And uh, uh, notice, this is not a function. Can you see from the table why this, this equation does not represent a function? Uh, one reason is the x value 3 is given two different y values. X goes to, 3 goes to 1, 3 goes to negative 1. Not a function. If you were to graph this equation, you get a parabola again, but it's, it's on its side. And do you remember there's a nice graphical way to, to, to determine if, if a graph is a function, and that's the vertical line test? Uh, if you can draw one vertical line that hits the graph more than once, then it's not a function. Of course, you can draw lots of vertical lines that hit it more than once. So anyway, this would not be a function. Let's keep on going here. Um, oh, how about this? Why don't you hit the pause button uh, and see if you can answer these questions for this function f of x right here. Go ahead, hit the pause. Okay. Now the first question they want you to ask, the first question they ask is find f of 0. f of 0 is the value of y when x is 0. Notice f of 0 is 1. Now here we go. If y equals 2, if f of x equals 2, find x. It looks like there might be two answers. Uh, y is 2 when x is about 1, and y is 2 also when x is about 3, approximately. How about this? When is x when is f of x greater than zero, uh, less than zero? Remember, f of x is y, so they're asking when is the y coordinate less than zero, or they're asking when is the graph below the x-axis. So the graph is below the x-axis from negative three to uh, should be negative one, shouldn't it? Negative three to negative one, and again from five to nine. The graph is below the x-axis. Find an x for this is the hard one, I guess. Find an x for which f of x plus one is three. So I want to find an x value so that if you add 1 to it and plug it into to the function, you get 3. Well, we know that f of 2 is 3, right? So how about just letting x plus 1 be 2? And then f of 2 would be 3, but what would x be? x would be 1. Interesting, huh? Um, now, at this point, uh, we're going to very shortly start to use some known functions. So you're going to have to get to know these if you don't already. Uh, know these functions I'm going to mention right now. Horizontal line, f of x equals b, where b is a constant. Uh, the domain would be all real numbers, and the range is just the number b. 
f of x equals x. You should know what that graph looks looks like. Uh, it's like a 45 degree line. The domain and range are both oral numbers. f of x equals x squared. Domain negative infinity to infinity. Range closed on zero to infinity. Now x cubed, I think we've seen that at some point. x cubed looks like this and the domain and range are both negative infinity to infinity. x to the fourth looks kind of like x squared. It's a little bit steeper in places but it's the same basic shape and the domain and range are the same as x to the fourth. Now look at the difference between x to the fifth and x to the third. You see how they look very similar? Again, x to the fifth is a little steeper with the same domain and range as x to the third. Okay, a few more here. Um, square root of x, that, that's going to come up again. Uh, the square root of x, notice there's a domain issue because x can't be negative. x could be zero, so the, the, so the domain is from zero to infinity and the range is also from zero to infinity. Notice it looks kind of like half of x squared, right? The upper half of x squared on, on its side. Cube root of x, for that matter, uh, does not have the same do domain problem that square root of x does because notice you can you can put a negative inside of a cube root like the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2 so and it also looks kinda like x cubed on its side does it doesn't it anyway so that, that's nice to keep straight and notice the fourth root of x looks kinda like the square root of x and so if you were to look at the graph of the fifth root of, of x should you be too surprised to learn that it looks a lot like the cube root so it's nice to start to recognize these patterns. The absolute value function is going to come up. Uh, what's, what's the domain and range of that? Domain is negative infinity to infinity and the range is zero, 0 to infinity. So you should know that one as well. A couple more. These come up a lot in Math 142 but we're going to use these also. Uh, f of x equals 1 over x. Again there's a, there's a domain problem there. x can't equal 0 because you have 1 over 0 then. You have what's called a vertical asymptote here. Uh, and uh, this is actually a horizontal asymptote. The y value gets, gets close to zero as x gets big. So what is the domain? Domain is x can equal zero. And the range, since, since this graph never touches the x-axis, the y-coordinate is never zero either. That, that's, that's the range. Um, 1 over x squared looks kind of like 1 over x, except that it's, it's uh, both sides are... are um, going up to positive infinity as x gets close to zero. Oh, by the way, notice uh, the graph of 1 over x is uh, symmetric with respect to the or origin. Later on we're going to call that an odd function. And f of x equals 1 over x squared is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Later on we're going to call that an even function. The domain would be x not equal to zero and notice the y-coordinate is always greater than zero. Okay, let's do a couple more here. This is kind of fun. This is called a piecewise function. Uh, it really is literally two pieces and the way you would graph this is you would just look at each one separately and you, you could think of the graph of y equals x plus 4. Isn't that a line? Although we don't want all of it, we just want the graph when, when uh, x is less than 0. So you could graph the whole line and then chop off the part uh, except or just, just keep the part that, that you want. So the graph of um, x plus 4 is, is a line with slope 1, y intercept 4, right? So it looks kind of like this, but we're, we're not inter interested in the positive side, just the negative side. And notice it's open circle at zero because it doesn't include zero. Um, the second half of this function is x squared minus 2. So like what I was saying is you could literally graph the function x squared minus 2 and then just keep the part that's rel relevant. And that would be the part where x is squared and equal to zero. There would be a closed circle there. And the domain, if you look at it, the, every x value, you can find a y, and so it's all real numbers, and so is the range. Notice this graph goes down to negative infinity, this graph goes up to infinity, so the range is also all real numbers. One last thing here, this is kind of inter interesting. Let's go backwards. Let's see if you can do this. Um, I'm giving you the graph of a piecewise function. Why don't you hit the pause button and see if you could find the formula for this one, okay? Hit the pause. Okay, well, notice it's a linear function that has slope 2 and y-intercept 1. So wouldn't that be 2x plus 1? If x is less than or equal to, uh, if x is less than 1, open circle. And then it's a horizontal line, so that would be y equal negative 2 if x is greater than or equal to 1. Okay, I guess that's it for now. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.